G'day, I'm Benjamin Carlyle, I'm a software engineer, I'm a systems engineer, and today we're talking about systems engineering. Systems engineering is the engineering you do when you've got a problem that's too big for one team to solve. You decide how the system is going to work, what it's going to do, you um, allocate requirements down to the individual teams, they may be to employees, they may be subcontractors, and you ensure that when they build their product products, that when they build their part of the system, that the whole system does what it should. It's not rocket science, except when it is. I work in software intensive systems, so a lot of my experience is software based. But a lot of software engineers generally don't understand what systems engineering is. In fact, the term systems engineer is being co-opted to mean system operator. System operator becomes systems engineer and it becomes this sort of, um, we're going to administer databases, we're going to do that sort of thing. No! Think INCOS. INCOS is the global body that governs systems engineering. Now by systems engineering we mean um, big projects, we mean uh, rocket ships, we mean Curiosity Lander, we mean aircraft, we mean building a big thing that takes a lot of different disciplines, a lot of different skills, bring them together to deliver a system that actually works and does it for the money. So today I wanted to focus on the top level of this process and that is requirements. What are requirements? You think you have an answer? Requirements are not user needs. Requirements are not the things the system should do. It's the design decisions that you've made about what the system will do. And those are the decisions that we're going to take through the entire engineering process and ensure that those decisions are met at every level in the overall design of the system. And those decisions can be um, in various forms. They can be functional requirements which say what the system will do. They can be performance requirements to say how quickly or how well it's going to do it. They can be resource requirements to say how much fuel is the thing going to use, how much power is it going to use, how much CPU capacity is a, is a piece of software going to use. And there's various techniques for dividing these things up. But requirements at the top level are really these decisions, they're the set of things that we've decided to manage. They're the, things, they're the properties of the system that we decided to define and manage through the engineering process. The system's going to have other properties. Not all properties of the system are requirements. Some of them are accidental properties. And the accidental properties of the system, hopefully, will all be good. And if you've written, uh, if, if you've written your requirements correctly, then you'll be governing all the aspects of the system that are important. Those that aren't important, those accidental properties, if they end up conflicting with your end goals, then you haven't done your requirements right. But requirements um, are not an airy-fairy statement of the customer's problem. They're not an, a statement of um, intent. They are a statement of what a system, a specific system with specific system boundaries is actually going to do, what its properties are, and the properties we care about, the properties we're going to manage. And that means that there is a management process to get a requirement to be to, from um, conceptualizing that requirement at the top level to allocating it down to different teams to actually getting that uh, the system delivered with that requirement, with that property of the system in place. That's requirements. It's not hard. It's not rocket science, except when it is.